car is cutting off, going to park, neutral. If you have this kind of problem, I think I have the solution for it. Now, if I go on reverse, the car most likely is gonna go to park by itself. You see, it went to park. And now when I go to drive, again, neutral. I'm not touching anything. Again, neutral, neutral, neutral. Oh, oh. See, neutral park is doing whatever she wants. So, I think I found out the solution, but I'm not 100% sure. Since I'm chasing this problem for quite a while, and now it's up to the point when you are not able to drive the car, as you can see. So, as far as I know, there are some seals uh, inside the transmission which go bad. Uh, there's actually one seal which is doing this, but I will replace all of them like there for shifting or something like this. You see it's doing it by itself right now. So pretty much uh, it's like a 10 20 dollar seal. And once I replace uh, her, hopefully the error will go away and uh, she will be like new since i already tried pretty much everything this is a brand new battery uh, i checked out the grounds and everything you can think of it uh, since uh, the error codes which i have are for uh, transfer case also i checked the transfer case it's good nothing wrong with it like uh, since you have some uh, uh, transfer case motor or something like this anyway uh, this is not the problem I already took it out and I checked it and it's good so most likely is this seal hopefully if not if it's going it's going to be something uh, like a electrical you see it's doing this like crazy uh, these are the parts I needed uh, to complete the job uh, and I think the problem is uh, this bridge seal uh, the rest of the parts uh, are recommended to be replaced every 80,000 miles something like this or even sooner uh, this is the plug adapter it does have a ring uh, this is the connector here you connect the electrical plug and uh, you do have a uh, body seals uh, the transmission valve of the body seals there are four of them uh, this is for your shifting and uh, hopefully uh, this will uh, cure the problem uh, but uh, let's find out let's uh, get to work First thing first, let's take off the skid plate. Next, uh, you have to make sure that you don't have any uh, transmission fluid leaks. I don't have any, uh, because uh, if you do have any leaks, uh, uh, your transmission fluid could be low and this also uh, could lead to the same problem. Uh, I did replace uh, the transmission pan about 20,000 miles ago, so I'm not uh, planning to replace it today. But you, if you haven't done it, it's a good time to do it. Uh, the next step is uh, to drain the transmission fluid. Uh, it does uh, use a 10 millimeter uh, hex. To remove the transmission pan, you need uh, to take out all these T40 bolts which are going around the pan and my suggestion is uh, to start uh, from these two next uh, by the uh, drain plug since sometimes you won't be able to fit uh, your socket and uh, you will need uh, a longer one to be able to take them off or shorter, it just depends, uh, but it's a good idea to start from them. And once all the bolts are loose, uh, you will be able to drop down the pan pretty easily. Almost all the bolts are out, I left uh, three of them to hold the pan for now. Since uh, the pan is full with fluid and uh, uh, once you start uh, dropping down the pan you might uh, spill the fluid all over you or on the floor so you have to be very careful doing it or have someone help you out uh, 
while you're taking it off just be careful Uh, next we are going to disconnect this uh, harness adapter just gonna use the pray bar just like this pretty simple there we go and then we need to pop out this uh, not so easy There we go. To remove the mechatronic unit from the transmission, uh, you need uh, to take off all the T40 bolts, and you have 13 of them, 7 on the front, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 here, 3 up here, 1, 2, 3, and 3 on the back, up there, as you can see. And once all the bolts are out, uh, you can drop down the mechatronic unit, just be careful. Uh, not to drop it and uh, it should be good it's full with oil so it will be a little bit messy but uh, don't worry you'll be fine the megatronic unit it's uh, out of the way and as you can see there is a little piece of the bridge seal uh, which end up uh, sticking to the megatronic unit uh, hopefully this is a good sign, that means uh, that uh, the bridge seal was bad, I don't know, we'll see, I hope so, so uh, let me take off the bridge seal, as you can see, the other piece, I don't know, hopefully it was bad, we'll see, I also need to replace these four valve seals here, and uh, this hole here is for the uh, plastic connector the plug which we took off earlier to remove the old seals uh, you can use a pick or flat screwdriver this one uh, I haven't touched yet but uh, you can use your flat screwdriver like this and as you can see I'm pushing very gently to crack loose the seal my camera doesn't want to focus that good but uh, you're getting the idea you're gonna go all around and once the seal is loose you're just gonna pray with the flat screw like this and you're gonna use uh, a very small uh, pliers to pull out the seal this way you won't risk uh, damaging uh, the walls To install the new seal, you are just going to push her, just like this. And uh, they are not going to be flush, as you can see. This is normal, this is how they are supposed to be. So don't worry. And uh, for the bridge seal, it does go one way, so you won't be able to mess it up. It's gonna be like this. There we go. And now I just need to put the valve tronic unit and the plastic piece, but that's gonna be on the end. Before torquing down the megatronic unit, make sure that the parking rod and the fork are aligned. As you can see, this long thing is the parking rod, and the silver thing, which is in the middle of the groove, is the uh, fork. It does have to be right here on the middle because it could be outside and uh, your parking uh, won't work. Uh, so just make sure it's like this, otherwise you have to take apart everything. And after this, uh, torque down the T40s on the Megatronic to 8 Nm. 
there is a sequence and pretty much that's it next we need to install this um, slate and as you can see there is a plastic piece sticking out it's going like this so pretty much uh, you have to push it start rotating and fill it until it clicks and then you're gonna push it further and that's it pretty much it's pretty simple you will feel it now I'm just gonna start rotating until I feel it oh there we go and now I just need to push further but I will need my right hand there we go I think it's all good and now we need to push this clip back up to close the clip actually you have to apply a constant pressure on the plug with your hand or some pray bar and uh, while you applying the pressure push, push the clip and it will eventually close it's a little bit tricky but uh, you will get it the transmission pan is mounted and now it just needs to be torqued down to 10 newton meters which uh, filled up the transmission up to the top until it start dripping and the next step is uh, to start the car well i uh, i topped it off while the car was running and you have to see a steady stream coming out the car is running and you see the steady stream coming out a slow steady stream and then you're gonna close your uh, oil filler plug and you're done well I think I found one of my problems the cane cables are not connected the green ones as you can see the corrosion took care of it so right now I'm gonna strip them and splice them together and hopefully this is gonna cure some of my problems since I do have a lot of uh, cane cables uh, failure uh, and I know for sure that this is one of the reasons I have to check all my lines now I think that I finally found out what is the problem you can see I try pretty much everything <laughs> and the funny thing is that it turned out to be most likely at least for now is good I just did replace the ignition coils all of them and this fixed the problem apparently uh, because uh, the car was at condition that uh, after I turn her on and as soon as uh, she go to operational temperature it start giving me uh, engine errors like um, it's throwing codes for the transmission mode function uh, the transmission is going to neutral and all these kind of things and I also uh, was having before that as I remember uh, problems with my DME or something like this and if you think about it it's very likely that ignition coils were shorting out and like uh, somehow hitting the, uh, the ECU and that's why I had this kind of problems <laughs> Actually, I read about this problem, like uh, one guy, like um, there was uh, uh, in the forums was saying this and I didn't believe it since it didn't sound right. But uh, now I'm sorry that I should have started with this, not uh, wasting so much time trying to figure out something else. But hopefully uh, that was the problem. And so far it's good, I drove the car, not I drove it, I drove it around the neighborhood probably for 30 minutes and now for 10 more. So I think I'm kind of in the clear because I want to put everything back together. You can see all this mess here, also on the back is a mess. I don't think even my uh, tail lights are connected, but uh, I'm just testing out the car right now, so we'll see. Well, this turned out to be the problem, the coils, all these are the old ones and I did have two new ones, 
but most likely one of those was giving a problem or so maybe more of the of one <sighs> this is just funny I didn't believe it but it turned out to be this after fixing the major problem which I had I ran into another problem some squirrels decided that it's a good idea to chew off the wire harness for the fog light and you see they completely destroyed this one on two places now I do need to patch this one fix it uh, how I found out this well simply my uh, headlight blinker was on uh, working so I replaced the bulb I also ended up replacing the module nothing changed so I did a further investigation and I found out that uh, they chew off uh, the wire here for the blinker they start chewing on one more but I fixed them already so this one is good I don't need to fix this one and on the other side uh, they decided it's a good idea to chew off <laughs> the blinker for the um, this is the side blinker on the fender there is a wiring harness here they also chew off this one so I fixed this one I opened this side only but I do need to open the whole thing since uh, uh, I do have uh, some error on the um, ambition, um, ambient temperature sensor, uh, which is right over here. And uh, probably the squirrels uh, chew off the wiring here also. And I do have uh, airbag light on for the driver side. Is this uh, sensor here? It's giving me error, but most likely they chew off the wiring harness. For this one also so I have to open uh, uh, the fender liner uh, this crap here and find out what is wrong and I also uh, decided uh, to finally fix my strut mount which is down here since it's very common for uh, the bushings which is there is one bushing here and this one on the bottom you see it look like a mashed potato uh, they do go bad they look like this and uh, when you go over bump, uh, the uh, the shock is uh, clunking, making clunking noise, and it's really annoying. So I'm fixing this. I already fixed the other one a few years back, so the other side is good. And I also fixed uh, the oil. Uh, the uh, behind that alternator, there is uh, one gasket for the uh, oil cooler, which I fixed already. It was a nightmare this one since I messed up the I messed up the the bolt like i mean strip the bolt head uh it's e10 or e12 e10 e10 uh, head uh, i messed it up but uh i fixed it anyway it was a long journey so now i do need to fix out this and i'm also replacing uh, the lens on the headlight uh, since you see the condition is pretty bad uh, the headlight is off anyway so I'm already ordered a new uh, lens. Uh, it's kind of tricky to take this off. Uh, I'm gonna hit it off, hit them with a heat gun and see if I can pop it off. I see a lot of guys they cutting it uh, with a Dremel, but I'm gonna try to just to heat it up and see if I can pop it open since I don't wanna cut the whole uh, lens. The other side is disassembled and it turned out exactly as I told you. You can see this is the uh, wiring for the um, airbag sensor and the squirrels chewed it off real good and down there uh, is uh, the harness for the ambient temperature sensor. Now I need to splice this one together. It's gonna be a little bit more difficult. This one is easy and uh, here is just a second. Uh, here is uh, the airbag uh, sensor which I'm talking about. Uh, hopefully I'll be able to recrimp uh, the wire here. Yeah, I think I'll be fine. And uh, to take off your headlight, actually you do need to remove uh, this bracket which I'm holding in my hands. And it's uh, holded by, let me put it back so you can see, it's holded by uh, four bolts. One here, uh, one over here down there and two on the top this one and this one uh, you need to unscrew this two on the top from the engine uh, compartment and you do have one more 
uh, which is down here. It's uh, holded uh, to the headlight. And uh, they do recommend cutting this one short, uh, this stud here, because uh, it's gonna be a lot easier uh, to take off the bracket. I didn't, I just uh, used a pray bar, a bigger pray bar, and I prayed it off a little bit more, and I was able to pop it off because you gotta pop it off from here. And uh, when you cut this uh, stud, when you cut it off, it's gonna be a lot easier to slide off the bracket. Anyway, uh, pretty simple, not a difficult task. And now I need to splice everything and then put everything back together. <sighs> These squirrels are killing me. I found the missing wire for the side blinker. I had to splice it with a different one since I couldn't find this piece. What the squirrels did, they brought it up here to the front and just left it. I actually was thinking they ate the whole thing because these squirrels are crazy. I mean, it sounds impossible to eat this, but I don't know. And these are the new foam bushings. This one is going on the bottom and this one is on the top. And also you do need to replace your bump stop because it's going to be most likely something like this. And that's it. Now I just need to torque down this and it's all done. I made a cut with a Dremel all the way here. So this way I will be able to pop off the lens. This is the first step you have to do. This is one of the pieces, first piece. I was supposed to cut the plastic, the lens a little bit closer because you can see it's holded by this, uh, this screw. Finally it's all back together and running. The headlights turn out okay, not too bad. And uh, there is no more check engine light, no airbag light, so now I think everything is good to go. Dex pipe is running out smooth now, at least for the last 30 miles, no transmission lights, no check engine lights, uh, so I guess uh, that finally the problem is resolved. I still can't believe that uh, a simple ignition coils can do this, you can see as soon as car is running pretty smooth, it won't throw me to a park or neutral, so I'm quite happy. So if you have the same problem, uh, just uh, try this, replace all your ignition coils, not just one out of them, because you can find which one is bad, but uh, most likely uh, the rest of them will do the same uh, later. So I just did the uh, state inspection. And I got my new stickers which is quite nice since this car was with uh, a year old expired sticker uh, since uh, she was broken uh, this was the reason <laughs> the ignition coils I was uh, chasing the transmission problems but it turned out to be a simple ignition coils so uh, that's it guys thanks for watching and see you on the next one